when you were a believer, uh, would Ooh. you mind sharing maybe a, a few of the specific things that caught your attention that made you go, oh, wait, I don't know that I believe it. I, that doesn't make sense to sure. me or maybe like specific issues, because I know I have a few. I would be curious. Yeah. I would be curious what things stuck out for you that caused you to relook at your beliefs in the way that you have. I actually put out a video this morning. I'm not sure when this will air, but this morning I put out a video where uh, currently Ken Ham and William Lane Craig are debating each other oh. uh, online. And I edited all that together to make it one concise, like so you can see the whole debate. But frankly, it's the two sides of this coin that were what made me fall apart. So there's relevance to it. And that's why I put this video. Sure. Up. So yeah. I'll, when I'll I link was, to that specific video. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, so people can watch it. So between my career in the film industry... And where I am now, I, I spent some time uh, in a, I owned a comic publishing company and I was a graphic novelist. I, I wrote and did a lot of editing and work for graphic novels. And I needed to write one for, well, I didn't need to. I was writing a story that involved humans and dinosaurs mm -hmm. living at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, I was a young earth creationist and in my head, that's a totally feasible why not thing. Right. Like the dinosaur, you know, that's, that, that, that could have happened. But... Uh, my work has never been for a Christian audience, even when I was a Christian. So I was like, well, I need to throw in some secular ideas here about dinosaurs so that this doesn't ring like it's a Ken Ham <laughs> pamphlet, right? Right. So I started looking at some of the arguments about, you know, well, how, how, how long ago do they live? And I wanted to have those details in and what, which, which dinosaurs might have evolved to which modern creatures. I just didn't even know what they said about that. Right. Well, as I was doing that, I'm like, well, man, some of this stuff makes kind of sense, right? Right, so, but it's something that you would have, before that, just sort of considered just abject, you know, abjectly false. Right, right, because yeah. um, unfortunately, the kind of Christianity I had one was very top-down authority. Mm -hmm. Like, So uh, I was in the Christian Missionary Alliance after I was a Mennonite, and it's a very top-down denomination. Mm -hmm. It's It's... Whoever's at the top is correct, and whoever's at the second top is second most correct. And, you know, you, you I learned I, I learned things on authority. I accepted the Bible on authority, just authority, authority, authority. And the part about that, which is unfortunate, is that it gave me an excuse not to study these right. things, right? Because yeah. You, it was like, well, these people have studied it all their lives, so I don't need to waste my time. I can work on my career and work on my family. And, frankly, my youth ministry and my music ministry were all, like, those were more important than studying. That was similar for me. I grew up in a very yeah. charismatic evangelical environment, huge emphasis on the Holy Spirit, um, and and sort of scholarly work just seemed like, I mean, honestly, no one taught me this, uh, mm -hmm. but the impression that I had was like scholarly work is done now. Like, right. like, like yeah. that was done a long time ago. It's just the truth. And, oh, all these people out there that don't believe it, they're just living an absolute lie influenced by the enemy. And, and so we, we don't have to worry about any of that. That's in the past. We've, we've, we know the truth. Let's just, let's go about our lives and our culture. And that was what I was in. I'm totally with you. Like, it would have been just more trivia to know yeah. if I'd have looked into it. Yeah, for right? Tuesday night trivia night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, so when that graphic novel had been published and I'd kind of had a hiatus between projects, I was like, you know what? I should really go and find what the best young earth creationist arguments are just so that I know them. Right. Cause it's niggling in my brain. Yeah. So who, who's the best? Okay. Well, I, Ken Ham is the most popular going back to this is popular. Correct. He's the most popular. So I'll order all his books. I ordered his answers books. And as I'm reading them, I'm like, Oh no, these answers are terrible. <laughs> I, I agreed with him. I agreed with his conclusions, but I'm like, if this is how you connected the dots, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So then it was like, okay, maybe I should go research what do the best evolutionists. And I know that's a weird word, but as a Christian, you think that's a word. Yeah. Evolution. What do evolutionists think? Um, and, you know, I start reading, reading up on that. And then I, I eventually came to this place where I'm like, oh, shoot. At least some parts of evolution are correct. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone who's told me that that was ridiculous also told me other things were ridiculous. So a lot of people like to think, oh, you became a, you stopped believing in young earth and you became an atheist. No, 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 no. It was just that, okay, now I can't accept everything on authority the way I did because they were wrong. I don't know about you. I, the kind of inerrancy I believed in was it's either 99% is too low. 
It had to be the Bible had to be one hundred percent inerrant. And ninety nine percent meant it's all garbage. Oh yeah, so, definitely. It was it was the the uh, unquestionable authority of scripture. It was right. it was beyond question for certain. Yeah, and I the yeah. same as you. It's like the Bible actually was a a big piece of the puzzle for me when I when I started when I remember turning the switch where I was mm-hmm. like, the Bible can't be the perfect word of God. It, it still at that point meant a lot to me. And actually, it still does in a totally different way now. But um, but at that point, it was still like I'm still willing to admit that it's inspired and that God exists and all of it's it's all connected. But I remember flipping that switch and being like, "Yeah, the Bible is is human, and there's things yeah. in it that are not correct." Absolutely. Or, and it started with not correct, and then it went, <laughs> "Well, if it if there's things that are not correct, are there?" like things that it depicts that didn't even happen. And how do we know, uh, how do, how do we know that we can trust all of these stories and the details in them? And you get in on your channel incredibly into the details with so much knowledge. And I, I've actually in, in my sort of last year or two of going through this process, I've learned a lot from your videos, you know, because when I'm, when I have questions about a specific issue, I go, Okay, I want to hear from Sean McDowell, and then I mm-hmm. and then I want to hear from Apologia, <laughs> you know, uh, and 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 see which one, which one feels like I could I could believe it. Um, yeah, so I, I really appreciate your your approach like so on much. that. Um, yeah. So you 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 started to have questions about young Earth creationism and evolution, and that was your entry point to this right this this process and- that. We sometimes now refer to as deconstruction. I'm sure during that time we didn't have that word. I didn't have the word. I didn't. Yeah. I never heard the word till later. Yeah. 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 But what what came next for you after that? So after that was then it's it was why I kind of threw up this Ken Ham versus William oh, Lane yep. Craig thing because mm-hmm. William Lane Craig, no, it's, it's uh, William Lane Craig, um, accepts all the science, but then just decided that well he's going to interpret the Bible in such a way that it's so loose. Mm that all of that science is fine. And for better or worse, I'm like, well, I think you're bending the scripture farther than it was intended. Yeah. Do you- Versus Ken Ham, who like, I think the Bible is completely rigid. And, but so therefore I'm going to throw out everything that contradicts it in, in, or even appears to contradict it. And I think for me, the intellectual honesty was, well, neither of these positions is tenable. Right. So what's the and, truth? So and what and the and the truth I think comes down to the fact that oh this it's not up to us to interpret this liberally or conservatively it's that oh this is actually a flawed book that could get things wrong. Mm-hmm. And once you open that door, that crack of a door where it's like oh it might not be that I have to interpret it crazily or that or throw out science maybe it's just wrong. Yeah. And then and as soon as you let that thought you probably remember oh, yeah. like that thought was a week of then me praying and like being on my knees and crying about like, wait, could it be wrong? But then you slowly, I slowly got more accustomed to, okay, let's examine this as if I'm not assuming that it's true. So then you start learning that, oh, the gospel manuscripts aren't as great as we think. And that actually we don't really have great reasons other than tradition to know who wrote them. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, oh, wait, the real scholars, the people I studied under, I went and talked to some of my Bible school professors. I'm like, did you know that Paul maybe only wrote only seven of those books? I'm like, yeah, we knew that. Yes. I'm like, why didn't you tell us in class? Did you know that the last, yeah, the the ending in Mark was probably added later? Yeah. The story in John. Oh, yeah, we knew that. Yeah, the story uh, in John of of the, uh, the woman caught in in adultery adultery. like that story was most likely added later because it's not in any of the earliest manuscripts i started learning those same things and i was like whoa 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 are you telling me you guys like knew about this stuff this whole time right and and i felt very betrayed i don't know about you yeah well i just felt like uh i i guess on one hand i kind of get why you wouldn't like want to advertise that but doesn't that Knowing that stuff, the, here's here's the here's where I landed on this particular issue, the, and it's a it's a real 
it's a real burner for me. It gets me is that when you're engaging with someone who studied this stuff, who's a Christian, they generally are willing yep. to admit like, oh yeah, you know what? Yeah. There's there. What we're doing is we're trying to do the best we can with what we have, the manuscripts what, with, you know, that we have the information that we have. And the, my belief this is what they'll say. My belief in God, in Yahweh, in Jesus, uh, in the virgin birth, in the resurrection, uh, in the resurrection appearances, my belief in all those things is based on the fact that it, it seems to me to be the best interpretation of what I see, which is a, which is a fairly humble claim, right? Right. Um, yep. So then when you're having a conversation like that, there's all this nuance and all this subjectivity and wiggle room and humility. And then 20 minutes later, in a totally different context, <laughs> they'll be talking about God and, and Christianity with like capital T truth. Like, oh, the, the, our culture in America or North America in our case yeah. uh, is, is, you know, it's, it's getting worse all the time because we've given up on truth, capital T truth. And I'm just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to like all that, that humility, that wiggle room, that subjectivity? It's gone as soon as you're having conversations about culture or how we apply things in our lives. And that's one of my biggest beefs. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like you, I, I, I don't know how long you went to church after you started having doubts, but I went to church for a good six, seven months after still having doubts. And it was very difficult to sit in the pew. Yeah. And not yell back, like not wait. That's not what you said, and that's the yeah. So I, I'm with you on all that. Yeah. So um, so you started taking these things apart, and you spent a week praying about it when you had that realization about the Bible. Yeah, and then yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you know, I people like to talk about how well oh, you. Well, they they use the royal you, right? They, they yes. a lot of say, well, atheists leave they leave Christianity because you want to go sin or because you haven't read enough books. Yeah, that's both. All, of, those are things. both tropes that I've t I've talked about a lot. Yeah, and I, I did nothing but order Christian books. Mm -hmm. I was just reading everything I could to try to hold on because uh, it, it was my whole life. Every everyone in my family is a Christian. All of my business partners are Christians. Everyone, I, oh, my whole social circle are all Christians. Like the cost of yeah. leaving was so. High. And all that I was promised on the other side was intellectual honesty, which is like, well, okay, great. What's the, what does that get me? Yeah. Um, so no, like I, I desperately tried to claim, and, and you probably feel, feel the same way. And, and I remember like my last prayer running on a treadmill, it's like, come on, like, just show me, give me, give me something. I'm willing to be even, okay, fine. The Bible's not true and whatever, but are you there God? Yeah. And it's like, um, because I'm, I wasn't no longer convinced you know, from the Bible any longer. Um, so, you know, and this whole, you know, all those tropes of a white people leave Christianity. I, I'm sure there's people who are non-Christians for terrible reasons. Yeah. I, I'm guessing there's lots, uh, but there's also no, there's no gatekeeper on if you're a Christian for terrible, terrible reasons. That's true. And that was one of the things I looked around and as my pew, I'm like, as I was losing my faith, I'm like, well, you haven't studied anything and you haven't studied. And maybe this is me being judgy, but yeah. I was looking around the congregation and I'm like, you, you couldn't even name the list, the books in the new Testament. And you're like going to heaven and you're going to heaven, <laughs> but I'm not. And I've, you know, just now spent six months to a year spending almost all my time trying to figure out if this is true. So yeah, those are frustrating things for for some of us yeah. who leave. And I don't remember what the original question was. No, it I doesn't got, 